Hello and welcome to Fruits of the Spirits. Today's question is, how should I commit my ambitions to God? Everyone has ambitions. They're what we want to accomplish and what we wish to be in a certain time frame. But as Christians, we have to factor God into the equation when trying to find out how to achieve these ambitions. Well, I'm here to give you some tips that you can use to find out how much effort we should put in and whether we should ask God for assistance. Number 1. Worldly Ambitions These are ambitions that don't have much to do with God. For example, we want to make six figures, we want to buy a house, we want to be a celebrity, things like that. God doesn't have a problem with these things, as righteous people have been rich like Abraham and Lot. See Genesis chapter 13 verses 5 to 6. And Joseph, he was rich and powerful. See Genesis chapter 41 verses 38 to 46. But it's one thing to want to someday be that, and it's a whole other thing to completely devote yourself to such a mission. God owns everything on this earth, see Psalm chapter 89 verse 11. So he even decides who becomes rich, famous, powerful, etc., and who doesn't. Let's take a moment to read that verse. The heavens are thine, and the earth is also thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. So, why would he give us something that we're using to leave him behind? On top of that, God expects that our top priority would be him. We see it all over the Bible, like in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5, Isaiah chapter 43 verse 21, and other verses. So, something we want to become can slowly push God out of the rightly deserved number one spot. Number two, if we want to involve God in our ambitions, like through prayers, then we also have to make sure that it's something God would be interested in. God has a plan for this world, and for his children, so it would make sense that what we would pray for would be in that line of thought. St. John left no doubt in his statement on this in First John 5, verse 14, where he stated, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. As we can clearly see from the phrase, according to his will, if we go up to God with a request like, I want to be the next big influencer and make a ton of money so I can have a big house, well, it just might not happen. Jesus Christ also told us that we should seek the kingdom first, and everything else that is then needed would be added afterwards, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Read that along with me. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. A better form of ambition, if we're talking about children, for example, is that I want more children so that I would be able to direct more people into your fold, Lord, and not, I want more children because my friend has children and I don't want to be left out. Number three, the best type of ambition is to be ambitious for God. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at some examples in the Bible to clear any doubts. How about David? In 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 1-5, to we see that the ambition that David had that he wanted to use his whole life for had nothing to do with him. It was all about God. We see here that he wanted to build a temple for God because at that time it was just a tent, according to 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verses 1-6. to He didn't want better success in battle, more riches, or more wives. His ambitions were all about God. Another place we see this is in Psalm chapter 132 verses 1 to 5, which you can check out after this video. Jesus Christ was also like this. He dedicated his entire life to God, and we can see that throughout his mission. He said it himself if you flip to the New Testament, John chapter 4 verse 34, where Jesus Christ said, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. So, to summarize... There are three things to think about on the topic of ambitions. One, if it's a worldly ambition, we can still pursue it, but we have to make sure that God is still our number one priority. Two, if we want to take our ambitions to God, it has to have something to do with Him. Three, even if our ambitions have something to do with God, the best ones are the ones that are entirely about Him. It's kind of like looking out for God, doing good things for Him. But that's it for this video on the answer to how should I commit my ambitions to God? If you enjoyed my video, then please consider subscribing and liking. 
and if you want to be notified of when I post again, then please click the notification bell. Have a great day, and God bless you.